Hey everyone, today we're looking at some of the most strange and unique perks in Dead by Daylight, a bit like we did with the add-ons. These perks in general don't get much use, but it's always really cool to see them used in game. Let's get into it. Starting out we have Blood Pact. This is an incredibly fun perk. It activates after healing the obsession, or being healed by the obsession. Once active, both of you will gain a 7% boost to movement speed. The catch being that you have to remain within 16 meters of each other at all times. If this distance is left, you lose the haste effect. It creates this really fun little mini game where the both of you have to run around as a speedy squad, making sure to remain together even when the killer is close by. It's a ton of fun and quite an enjoyable challenge as you attempt to stick together and utilize the speed to its full effect. If played well, it can actually be relatively strong too. I would highly recommend giving this perk a shot, even if just for a game or two. For our first killer perk, we have Coup de Grasse. This perk is pretty awful. Whenever a generator is completed, you gain a token. Each of these tokens will extend your next lunge range by 80%, this allowing you to reach a survivor where you might not have without the extension. Now, the main issue with this perk is how it gains tokens. Gaining tokens through gen completion is just a dreadful way to be rewarded, partly because, well, ideally you don't want to lose gens, but also because the reward of one extended lunge just isn't worth it. It also requires you to use the extended lunge on your very next lunge attack, so you don't even get a choice really on when to properly use it. You have to awkwardly go out of your way to save it. With that all said, it's super unique, and a perk that does provide this very unpredictable thing that can often throw survivors off. It's also just pretty fun to lunge that far. Autodidact is my favourite perk in the game. This perk nerfs your healing ability at the start of the game, but allows it to be built up over time to be far greater than usual. This perk works on a token basis. You gain tokens by healing and hitting special skill checks. For your first two skill checks, the heal will regress backwards. Each time you hit the skill check though, the penalty becomes less, and by the third you actually begin to gain a bonus to the heal after hitting the skill check. At five stacks, Autodidact can heal around half of a survivor's health in a single skill check. I really love the whole concept of this, the idea of nerfing yourself early on and building up your healing potential throughout the match. It's incredibly fun, and can create some stressful but entertaining moments. Is it good? Not really. Is it fun though? Yeah. I think so. Hex Pentamento is a fairly new perk, and I believe our only Hex here. This perk allows you to reconstruct and reignite destroyed totems. Each time you do this, you gain a small benefit. One totem reduces survivor repair speed, two reduces heal speed, three decreases recovery speed, four exit gate opening speed, and five makes all the totems permanently blocked by the entity, stopping them from being cleansed. It's a really unique slowdown perk that can affect all aspects of gameplay when fully leveled, and be a permanent detriment when maxed out. With that said, it is quite hard to actually get 5 broken totems, and then reignite them all before a survivor destroys one again, as once a reignited totem has been destroyed, it can't be repaired a second time. Still, there are good pairings to make it work, such as Hex Plaything, that encourages the breaking of hexes, or just simply running a hex heavy build I would say. Fast Track is a gen based perk. Each time a teammate is hooked, you gain 3 tokens. These 3 tokens represent a percent percentage progression on a generator. If you hit a great skill check, these tokens are consumed, and the generator progresses by the amount you have. It's a cool idea, and I think a pretty unique one too. Most gen progression perks typically just give a flat buff to speed, or to teammates or something. I like that this gives you tokens, allows you to stack and save them up, and is still pretty good at increasing gen speeds. It kind of sucks that it relies on teammates getting hooked, but that usually happens enough to make the perk worthwhile I think. One of the more interesting gen progression perks in my opinion. Moving on we have Merciless Storm. This is a perk I really love. It isn't good, it isn't even close to being good, but hey I do really like it. This perk activates when a generator reaches 90% completion. When it does, it will give the survivor a series of difficult skill checks, ones that are similar to that of the yellow glyph. If any of these skill checks are missed, the generator is blocked for 20 seconds. The main downside of this being that whilst blocking the gen, you can buy a bit of time, however it still keeps the gen at 90% completion 
and disallows you from kicking it, making it just a really average perk for delays. It's a very fun and unique one though, and I do really enjoy the incorporation of the yellow glyph skill checks. It's a cool way to cause gen regression, but equally a completely ineffective one. Ace in the Hole is next up, and is a chest-based perk. This will make items you pull from chests, have add-ons attached. You're guaranteed one and have a 50% chance of receiving a second. This perk is really unique for giving you add-ons mid-game, something which I don't think is doable with anything else in the game, let alone just the survivor side. This perk can be enjoyable purely for its looting potential. It's pretty fun to go around looting chests, and it's even better when you have the extra random factor of what add-ons you might get. Depending on what you get too, it can actually change up the trial in a pretty interesting way each time. You might get a map with the ability to see killer possessions, you might get a great flashlight, or you might get a medkid with a styptic agent. Play with your food is a part that requires you to actively chase, yet avoid the obsession. I personally think that's a really cool mechanic even though I think the perk is pretty awful. Every time you drop chase with the obsession, you gain a 5% boost to movement speed. You're able to do this three times, each time represented by a token. By three tokens, you gain a sizable 15% boost to movement speed. These tokens are only lost when you attack a survivor in any way, each attack losing you a token. This can be marginally effective for insta-down characters, using the extra speed to their advantage, and making their insta-down attacks hard to avoid. That's personally the most use I seen for it at least. Even then, I'm not entirely convinced of its effectiveness. The concept of dropping chase for a buff though is really interesting, and makes this perk, if nothing else, pretty unique. Metal of Man is our final survivor perk today. This perk requires you to first take three protection hits to activate it. Protection hits being when you get hit instead of a teammate in close proximity. Once active, the next hit you take will have no effect, and you can run away as if it didn't happen. After this, once you've healed back to healthy, your aura is revealed to the killer. This perk is really unique, and the only perk that I think allows a full-on negation of a hit. Perks like Borrowed Time still require you to mend after being hit whilst injured. Metal doesn't need you to do that even. You just shrug it off. It's a cool idea, it's just a shame that the activation requirement needs you to go out of your way to take protection hits. Protection hits are largely difficult to get, and can't be reliably achieved. Three times is quite a few too. Still a very unique effect. It would benefit, I think, from a reduction from three to two protection hits, or possibly some kind of inclusion of other altruistic actions like hook saves. Finally, we have Furtive Chase. This may be a strange choice, but I think this perk is honestly one of the most unique killer perks we have. It has quite a bit of utility, actually. This perk gains tokens after hooking the obsession. Whoever then saves the obsession becomes the new one. For each token gained, your terror radius in chase is reduced by 4 meters, stacking up to 16 meters at the maximum of 4 stacks. This perk has cool utility in being able to switch the obsession, and makes it combo fairly well with perks like Nemesis. It also encourages you to go for a new perk person after each unhook. The ability to have a reduced terror radius can also be quite effective for characters with smaller terror radiuses, in particular. Sure, the chase music is still going to be there, but the shorter radius can sometimes throw them off. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. Let me know what perks you think deserve to be here, down below. Thanks, and goodbye.